This is the first part of a three-part series on the Channel Islands of the English Channel between southern England and northern France. My name is Michelle Gibson. I have been intrigued by the Channel Islands since I saw this map of Alderney Island and all of the forts on this small island, which is three miles or five kilometers long and one and a half miles or 2.4 kilometers long. This is what we are told about Alderney. It is the northernmost of the inhabited Channel Islands. Alderney is part of the Crown Dependency of the Bailiwick of Guernsey, along with the Channel Islands of Guernsey and Sark. A bailiwick is the area of a jurisdiction of a bailiff, the Chief Justice of the Bailiwick. Alderney is the closest of the Channel Islands to both England and France, and is separated from the Cap de la Hague in France's Normandy region by the Alderney Race, described as a dangerous passage because of the strong currents that run through it. From this particular map, it certainly looks like there is more of Alderney Island below the water than above it. Before I start looking at what's found on Alderney, I want to share a comparison for similarity of appearance of what Alderney in the English Channel looks like from above on the left, and Shemya in the Bering Sea, one of the near islands along with Atu and Agatu, the westernmost of the Aleutian Islands, which I found on a circle alignment I was tracking which originated and ended in Merida, Mexico. I'm going to start on Alderney at Fort Grosnes, located on the north central shore of the island. Fort Grosnes was said to be the first Victorian fort completed on Alderney. Constructed between 1850 and 1853 to defend the harbor breakwater works with 28 guns and seven batteries. We are told that it was the French coup d'etat in 1851, followed by the crowning of Prince Louis Napoleon Bonaparte, the nephew of Emperor Napoleon I. As Emperor Napoleon III in 1852, and subsequently the establishment of the Second French Empire, that prompted the start of the defensive works in the Channel Islands. It was during the time of the Second French Empire, we are told, that the Grand Railway Network came together in France, centering on Paris, and the time when Paris was rebuilt with broad boulevards, striking public buildings, and very attractive residential districts for upscale Parisians. Georges-Eugène Haussmann was the prefect of the Seine and was credited with the renovation of Paris with a vast public works program between 1853 and 1870, commissioned by Emperor Napoleon III. This photo is labeled as the destruction of Paris during the implementation of the Haussmann Plan. So this was said to be Paris before the public works plan. And Paris after the Haussmann Plan. The Second French Empire ended with the defeat of Napoleon III's military forces in 1870 to the Germans in the Franco-Prussian War. This was said to be an illustration of Prussian troops marching past the Arc de Triomphe in Paris during the Franco-Prussian War. It was said that the German Chancellor Otto von Bismarck manipulated the situation by dispatching the Ems telegram on July 14th of 1870 inciting the Second French Empire to declare war on the Kingdom of Prussia on July 19th of 1870. I thought it was important to include this information about the Second French Empire as what appears to be a connection to the mud flood reset and how it was covered up in our historical narrative to explain the existence of the old world architecture of heavy masonry. Now back to Alderney Island. Going east along the north coast of Alderney, we come to Bray Harbor, the main harbor on the north side of the island. The massive masonry breakwater of Bray Harbor was said to have been built between 1847 and 1864 to protect the Royal Navy ships in the harbor in the 19th century. 
just east of and overlooking Bray Harbor, is Fort Albert, said to have been built between 1856 and 1859 and named Fort Albert after Prince Albert's death in 1861. It was said to have been intended to be the strongest coastal defense work and to have acted as the main citadel if the island was ever overrun by enemy forces. East of Fort Albert, we come to Fort Chateau Alatoc, described as the Victorian fort on the most northerly point on Alderney. It was said to have been completed by 1855 for the protection of the eastern arm of a breakwater that was never built and designed for 23 guns with accommodation for 128 men. Now it is privately owned and used to host part of the Arts Festival on Alderney. Next, we come to Fort Corblay. Now described as a highly rated Victorian fortress that has self-catering accommodations on site where people cook their own meals. The Alderney Lighthouse, also known as the Menez and the Kisnard Lighthouse, is adjacent to Fort Corblay. The Alderney Lighthouse was said to have been built out of granite in 1912 to protect shipping from the dangerous waters of the Alderney Race and the many rocks surrounding Alderney. Here's a picture of the sun coming up behind the Alderney Lighthouse in direct alignment with it. This is a good place to mention that I have found such alignments with lighthouses in other locations. While I do believe that lighthouses serve to guide ships through maritime passages for the original advanced civilization, I also think they were serving multiple purposes on the Earth's grid system, including, but not limited to, astronomical alignments. Unlike Fort Corblay, which was converted into a vacation accommodation, Fort Les Amaux Florain, the next place we come to on the coast, is in ruins. It was said to have been completed in 1859 and designed for 67 officers and men and seven guns. We are told that it was the first fort to be abandoned because of its difficult location. Fort Kesnard is next on the coastline, on the left, and when I saw it, I was immediately reminded of Fort Massachusetts on the right, located on Ship Island in Mississippi, part of the Gulf Island National Seashore of the Gulf of Mexico. Fort Kesnard was said to have been built and completed in 1855 as a defense against an attack from France and Fort Massachusetts, constructed between 1859 and 1866, following the War of 1812, as a coastal defense for New Orleans and the Gulf Coast. Fort Ume Erb is next on the coast and is located on a tidal island that is accessible by a causeway at low tide. Even though there are no steps at the entrance to get into this fortification, we are told at one time it was said to have five guns on four towers. Here's a view of Fort Ume Erb in the foreground in a geometric triangulated relationship with Fort Kesnard, the ruins of Fort Les Amaux Florain, and the Alderney Lighthouse. Now we come to what is called the Nunnery, located on Longest Bay on the southeast part of Alderney Island. The Nunnery is said to be the best preserved small Roman fort in Britain and to be the first evidence of military construction on Alderney. We are told that it was originally built in the 4th century AD to defend Longest Bay and the nearby Roman settlement, now an archaeological site on what is called Longest Common. Archaeologists explain the deep ground covering the ancient stonework by saying that sand could have buried the island's first main settlement after its occupants moved to the main settlement of St. Anne, and sand blew in and buried everything under 3 to 4 feet or 1 to 1.22 meters of sand. Hmm. 
I wonder if there is another explanation, like evidence for a mud flood type event, perhaps. Fort Ile de Ross is on an island in Longest Bay, across from the nunnery on the shore of the bay, which is accessible by a causeway at low tide. We are told 10 men manned 64 guns at this fort, starting in 1859. Essex Castle was said to have been originally constructed by King Henry VIII between 1549 and 1554, said to have been unfinished because the work on the construction of it was stopped by Queen Mary and turned into a private residence for a while. And it was said to have been partially demolished in the 1840s and turned into a Victorian fortification. So here's where I find something interesting. If there was so much concern about fortifying this tiny little island, then why aren't there any fortifications to be found on the southwestern end of the island, between Essex Castle and Fort Cloncay? The island's main settlement, St. Anne, is completely exposed on this side. All that any prospective invaders needed to do would be to land here. Fort Cloncay was also said to have been completed in 1855 and is also at the end of a causeway that floods at high tide, like Fort Ile de Raz and Fort Ume Erb. So what is it with all of these tidal islands? A tidal island's existence depends on tidal action. It is connected to the mainland by a causeway that is exposed at low tide and submerged at high tide. Famous examples of tidal islands include St. Michael's Mount in Mount Spey in Cornwall, England. And Mont St. Michel, a tidal island and mainland commune in France's Normandy region. Both St. Michael's Mount and Mont St. Michel are named for the Archangel Michael. I would love to know what the true significance was of these tidal islands. There are many more examples than the ones I have shared here. One last thing about Fort Cloncay I would like to mention before I move on to Fort Torgas is that like Fort Corblay, today Fort Cloncay is a self-serving accommodation for up to 13 people. Now we come to Fort Torgas, also said to have been completed in 1855, to accommodate 346 men and 33 guns in five batteries. The Cambridge Battery and Battery 3, part of the northern defenses of Fort Torgas, was open to the public in recent years and had been adapted for use by the German forces during World War II. During that time, Alderney became one of the most heavily fortified sections of Hitler's Atlantic Wall, one of the largest building works of the 20th century, fortifications built between 1942 and 1944, envisioned to make an Allied invasion of the Western European mainland from the sea impossible, we are told. The Atlantic Wall was said to have been an extensive system of coastal defenses built along the coast of continental Europe and Scandinavia. The Channel Islands were occupied by the German armed forces during the war from June 30th of 1940 to May 9th of 1945 and were the only part of the British Isles occupied by Germany. Alderney was the only Channel Island to be evacuated during World War II with all of the islanders being forced to evacuate in June of 1940. With Alderney emptied of inhabitants, the Germans proceeded to build four work camps. The Germans surrendered Alderney on May 16th of 1945, eight days after the Allies accepted the unconditional surrender of the armed forces of Nazi Germany, and seven days after the liberation of the Channel Islands of Guernsey and Jersey. The people of Alderney were able to return to the island in December of 1945 after the extensive cleanup needed, after the German occupation and all that entailed. Even with cleanup, Alderney was said to have been found in rough shape, with houses derelict, forts damaged, and wooden structures that had been burned as fuel. 
Fort Plat Céline is shown on the Alderney Starfort map between Fort Torgus and Fort Doyle, but it doesn't appear to be there physically anymore, with its memory retained in the name of this beach. This is a close-up on Google Earth of the lone structure on the Plat Céline beach, and it could have been the Starfort at one time, but it looks like it has been repurposed into something like a storage or parking area. Fort Doyle is the last fort on my Star Fort tour of Alderney, near my starting point of Fort Grosnes. As is the case with Fort Platt Saline, I can't find much information about Fort Doyle either, but at least it is still standing. Alderney is not the only small island I have encountered with a high concentration of Star Forts. Fernando de Naronja, the name of the main island and its archipelago, is off the coast of Brazil, near the city of Natal. The main island has an area of 7.1 square miles, or 18.4 kilometers squared, and the archipelago's total area is 10 square miles, or 26 kilometers squared. So what I found out that is really interesting about Fernando de Naronja is that in its relatively small area, there were at least eight star forts here at one time. Bermuda is another island that comes to mind that was chock full of star forts. This is a 1624 map of Bermuda that was attributed to Captain John Smith of Jamestown, Virginia fame. I found that both Fernando de Naronja and Bermuda figure prominently on Earth's grid lines. I used this Google Earth screenshot on the left to orient myself to Alderney's location with respect to England and France. In order to match up Alderney's location with this map on the right, and to show what appears to be a triangulated relationship between these three places with a high concentration of star forts for their small sizes. There are other places and regions with a high concentration of them, like they are some kind of energy nodal points on the Earth's grid system. And interestingly, places like Valletta and Malta, where there is a high concentration of star forts, were heavily bombed during World War II. And it was the same scenario with the attacks on star forts in the Strait of Dardanelles in Turkey during the Gallipoli campaign of World War I. Were these wars a cover for the intentional destruction of the infrastructure of the original ancient advanced Moorish civilization? And why is an area of military operations in wartime called a theater? Are they telling us something without telling us they are telling us? One more thing I would like to bring up about Alderney is that it is home to the only working railway in the Channel Islands. Working railway on a three square mile or eight kilometer squared island. The railway was said to have been built by the British government in the 1840s and first opened in 1847. Its original purpose, we are told, was to carry stone from Menez Quarry at the eastern end of the island to build the breakwater in Bray Harbor and all of the Victorian era forts. It runs for two miles or 3.2 kilometers following a coastal route from Menez Quarry to Bray Harbor, manned by volunteers for operation on summer weekends and bank holidays at the present time. There were three royal visits to Alderney by Queen Victoria and Prince Albert in August of 1854. And on one of them, the royal couple was said to have ridden on an Alderney railway car under a striped silk canopy, pulled by two black horses to the quarry before returning. Three years earlier, in May of 1851, Queen Victoria opened the great exhibition of the works of industry of all nations, held in the Crystal Palace in London. I believe this was the official kickoff of the New World Order timeline, and that this one and subsequent exhibitions, expositions, and world fairs were showcasing the technology and architectural wonders of the original civilization before being hidden away or forever destroyed. All of this so-called Victorian construction of massive fortifications on Alderney is attributed to this time frame, starting in the 1840s on through the 1850s. I definitely think all of this is connected to the reset timeline and new historical narrative. Another point that I would like to make is that 
Through the course of my research, I have definitely found an integrated connection between all rail infrastructure, canals, and star ports that I believe were built by the ancient advanced civilization and were an integral part of the Earth's grid system and not built by who we are told when we are told. See my video, Correlations Between Physical Infrastructure of Railroads, Canals, and Star Forts, and other interesting things for detailed information about what I found in my research about this subject. I'm going to end this video here, and in the second part of this series, I'm going to take a look at the other Channel Islands of Jersey, Guernsey, Sark, and Herm.